watching on the Big 12 now on ESPN Plus. It's Caton Henry against Sarah Willis. And we're underway. First pitch, a ball, 1 0 the count. Robert Guest is your home plate umpire with Cameron Ellison at first base, Donald Brown at third. Against Henry, who's hitting 466, six homers, 21 RBIs, had a couple of hits in last night's game. She takes a strike, and it's one and one the count. Getting off to a good start here for UCF is going to be huge. We saw Caitlin Felton get behind in the two-run lead early in that first inning, but then really settled in quickly after that. But Sarah Willis looking today to kind of start from the very first pitch. The 1-1, one, one, a swing and a miss. And there's a key pitch right there in this game. Willis is going to have to be effective against this offense. Oh, look at that changeup just down in the zone. That's a beautiful pitch right at the shins there, keeping the ball down. It's a tough pitch to hit as a hitter, just saying. <laughs> Willis ahead, one and two here. Henry gets a piece of it and fouls it off. This is not the first time Sarah Willis has faced Texas. When she was at Washington in 2022, she actually faced him in the Seattle Regional as a hitter. She actually faced him as a hitter in the lineup. Didn't pitch against him, but was a hitter in a regional that Texas won. That was the year that Texas would go all the way to the College World Series at OKC before losing to Oklahoma in the National Championship Series. One, two. There's a ground ball to second. Aubrey Evans is there. Throw to first in time. 4-3 ground out to get the first out of the ball game. Aubrey Evans making the play. Got to bring up Mia Scott to the play. So Scott hitting 430 on the year. Two homers, 24 RBIs. Hit two for three last night with Driving in two runs, had that triple. And she takes a strike. For Scott, that was her fifth triple of, triple of the year. There's Mike White, head coach for Texas. Been the head coach since 2019. The 0-1 pitch from Willis. It's up high, ball one. It's been to five Women's College World Series. Mike White, where he's at Oregon. And of course, led Texas in 2022. The most impressive stat, all 13 teams he's coached at Oregon and Texas have made it to at least the Super Regionals. That's amazing. That's amazing. I was going to say, that's really good. <laughs> the 1-1 is low ball. I mean, you would think at one point you just get you know, clipped at a regional. It happens to everybody. Absolutely. You know, it's just the upsets and stuff, and it's nothing new to the world of sports, but Mike White finding so much success consistently. This Longhorns 26-3 on the season, ranked number two in the country in the ESPN poll, as well as in the D1 softball poll. Scott fouls it off. 2-2. Two two. Likes the depth of this team, feels this is the most deepest team he's had, at, especially since being at Texas deepest offense he's had and talking to a lot of people that have followed the Texas program for a long time many believe this is the best offense in Texas softball history they've always had the pitching obviously going back to Cat Osterman Blair Luna but they feel they have the offense this year because they're on pace to shatter a lot of school records 2-2 two -two. Scott fouls it off and part of it is they have a lot of diverse, uh, diverse ways to beat you offensively, which Mike White likes. He can beat you with small ball as well as with the big long ball. Depth is important because then you start taking pressure off of your players, and especially your key players at that too, because when you have a hitter that just has to be the one to always come through and you're always relying on them to get the big hit, it becomes a lot and it becomes a heavy load to carry. So when you can count on anybody, it's awesome as a coach. Off speed, just missed there. His count is full. There's Steve Singleton, assistant, as you see the last pitch here. I guess Sarah Willis just flipping in that changeup on the 2-2 two -two count. I love that location, really challenging Mia Scott and seeing how disciplined she's going to stay in the box. It's good execution from Willis. Payoff pitch from Willis. Mr. Lowe, ball four and a walk to Scott. It's a good discipline by Scott. Gonna bring up Jolie Mitchell. To the plate. It's 
So Mitchell steps in. The transfer from Notre Dame, the senior from Arkansas, is in the top five in the country in batting average, in OPS, slugging percentage, and on-base percentage. She hits with Scott at first and one out. Shows bunt, went around, it's 0-1 the count. Texas not afraid to put the ball down on the ground as small ball. Kristen Zaleski, who's at first base coach, she runs the offense from a short game standpoint. She's a former multi-time All-American at Texas State, the all-time leader in base hits in the Sun Belt Conference history and at Texas State. The 0-1 pitch. There's a strike by Willis, and she's ahead 0-2. Sarah Willis just going right at these hitters. Look at this one painted on the outside corner off the plate. I love that pitch. It's a tough pitch as a hitter to hit, especially when you're chasing pitches behind in the count. It's a good pitcher strike. Deal two pitch. Got a piece of it there. Mitchell stays alive. One of the things that Mike White said yesterday in that in-game interview that we got to have with him was we're swinging at her pitches. You know, we were swinging at Felton's pitches at the time, and she's challenging us outside of the zone, but we're not sticking to our plans on our offense. And so today I'm sure that was their discussion after the game last night. Hey, we walked away with a win, but how good could we have been, and how much better did we really get? 0-2 from Willis. Low for a ball. Both head coaches said that. You know, it was cool to have both of them during the game in the fourth inning, Sidney Ball Malone and Mike White. Thanks to both schools, uh, Chris Brown, the SID of Texas, and Ryan Ladika, UCF, for helping us make that happen. But both felt that the opponent, the pitchers were dictating what they were doing offense, not the other way around. I think both were sort of uh, told us that during the game. One, two. Low, two and two. I think Mike White also even told us they felt they were a little – Maybe impatient at times with runners on base. Yeah, and as a coach, I think you're displeased with that approach because you spend so much time providing these athletes and your team with information and data heading into the matchups, and you want them to feel comfortable and confident in their plans. So to see them kind of stray away from that is a little discouraging. 2-2, two -two, it's a grounder to third. Humphreys will go to second. Aubrey Evans will throw to first. Mitchell gets, uh, gets on there on the fielder's choice. But good defense there by Humphreys, the freshman, to get the force out at second for the second out of the inning. And this ball just hit right off the hands a little bit of Mitchell, but Humphreys doing a good job trying to turn the double play. Just a slight hiccup there and decent speed down the line from Mitchell, allowing her to reach for safely. But good job, good heads up play and pre pitch talk from the UCF defense, knowing that they're working for that lead out. Reese Atwood at the plate. The nation's leader in RBIs takes a strike. When you talk about right now conversations for National Player of the Year, Reese Atwood has to be right there. Leads the nation in RBIs and is in the top 10 in batting average, slugging percentage, and in home runs with 11. The 0-1 pitch. Atwood takes ball one for the sophomore who's on pace to have maybe the greatest offensive season any Longhorn has had. She's 16 RBIs away from the school record for a single season RBI record at 66. Seven home runs away from the single season home run record, which is 18. The 1-1 one, one pitch. Ball one, two. And what makes her special is she's got power to all sides of the field. Can hit to all, all sides of the field. Showcasing that in their home run against Florida State Wednesday night by drilling one to right. I think that's a common theme that you see with really great hitters is they can hit to all sides of the field and they've got power to all parts as well. The 2-1 pitch high runner goes and Mitchell the throw to second is in time. She's out. What a throw by Carsmore. Satali Gutierrez out of Stanford, Texas. The first pitch to Stormy is a strike. Owen won the count as Gutierrez getting the ball here from Mike White on this Saturday. And Sitlali is going to be more down in the zone with a good changeup. It's going to be her curve and her off-speed change that has really good bite right there at the end prior to reaching the catcher's mitt. Late movement, so tough as a hitter. The velo for the faster pitches is going to be in the upper 60s, topping off at 68, 69. It's going to be crucial for UCF to have a game plan going into the box. Are we going to hit hard or are we going to hit soft? The 
0-2 pitch. Outside ball one to Stormy, who you liked her at bats last night, and of course came up with the bases loaded in the bottom of the seventh and drilled the ball in the center right to Henry, but it was well struck. But you liked her at bats yesterday. Well, I think when you're a coach and you talk about approach, you don't always look at output, right? Stormy was one for four on the night, but had really great at bats. It's one to left here, is playable. He's the routine ones, but also having fun with the flashy ones too. He's been known to put together some really great defensive teams. Jada Cody at the plate, taking ball one. Had a couple of hits in last night's game, hitting 386 to lead the Knights. The 2022 All-American, Cody. Gets Gutierrez, takes outside for a ball. Yeah, it was interesting. Mike White feels he's, his defense is getting better week by week. The stats kind of misleading. They do make a, a lot of They've made like 33 errors, but that's because they get to a lot of balls because they're so athletic. Feels that that's uh, – and that the, he really likes what he has, especially in the outfield. He has so many options in the outfield, and they cover so much range. Like, you've got to it, – it's there was a couple of balls UCF hit that you're like, that might drop, but that outfield had great range. They were get to get to it. It's almost a catch-22 there, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Pick and choose your battles. <laughs> if you don't get to balls, you can't make errors, right? But the more speed you have, the better you can be. Cody will take a walk. A one-out walk to Cody. Here in the bottom of the first. Yeah, Scudier is really not close there. They'll now face Sierra Humphreys, the freshman. And let's talk about the Knights changing up the lineups here a little bit. They want to get off to better starts. Coach Paul Malone mentioned in the postgame Friday night, they keep getting to these slow starts. They have trailed in each of their first five, uh, uh, excuse me, eight, seven Big 12 games. They've, this season, they've actually, the one inning that they have given up more runs than they've scored is the first inning. They keep digging themselves a hole. That's been the story. They make great comebacks, but they come up short. They try to, they want to get a better start today. Well, UCF only has three players in the lineup that have played in all 26 games. And I think it's just really Cindy Ball Malone wanting to switch things up and say, hey, I'm going to give other people opportunities. Humphreys went around there and is down to the count 0-2. Of course, they've talked about the depth of the roster here, and I think they're seeing it. Hey. So, you know, let's give it a different look. Try to get a spark somewhere. Coach Paul Malone is always willing to adapt and make changes on the fly. As Humphreys gets jammed, pops it up in the infield. Washington and Martinez, it was Washington that makes the catch. Washington like, hey, I had that. Did you not hear me? <laughs> makes the catch for the second out. Going to get fisted right there on the hand is Humphreys, but... Yeah, just a little miscommunication right there. I think it's a matter of who's got the better angle, who's going to come back and cover second. Just trying to take a little bit of dominance. You see Washington's got the C there. That means the captain. Mm -hmm. That's a big deal. No Texas Longhorn has worn a C on their jersey. All the players have so much admiration and respect for Washington. Chloe Evans at the plate. Fouled that off 0-1. She went 0-3 for 3 last night, hitting 294 on the season. It's kind of been scuffling a little bit lately at the plate. Of course, when you're facing top pitching staffs like Oklahoma State, Kansas, Texas, all back to back, you're, you're, it's not easier said than done to hit. I mean, you're talking about three of the top 31 pitching staffs, courtesy of the ERA in the country. Texas number five in ERA as a staff. There you see Texas's pitching coach, Patty Ruth Taylor, in her first year after coming over from Lehigh. Yeah, those kind of matchups don't make it easy for opposing hitters. <laughs> the 0 2 swing and a miss. Chloe goes down on strikes as Gutierrez pitches the, uh, gets, works around a walk. The nice Atwood was at the plate in the first when Jolie Mitchell was thrown out trying to steal second for the first time this year. Atwood hits one to deep right field. Evans goes back at the wall, makes the catch. An amazing catch by Chloe Evans who once again dazzles in right field. One out. An amazing catch. That ball was hit pretty well. She's getting a new wristband. Look at this play. Chloe Evans tracks that ball down so nicely out there. Look at it running into the wall. I love how, too, she was able to shift the momentum. She was turned one way, then opens up, turns the opposite way to make the grab. On the other side of her body, that's great athleticism from Evans. Wow. So good. Here's a comebacker to Willis. Will throw to first in time. 
Of course, Chloe Evans roommates with Sarah Willis. They met. They both came in as transfers, and they have become best friends. Probably going to be friends for life. And Chloe might go down as maybe the all-around best outfielder in UCF softball history. And that's saying a lot, but she is such, such a fun player to watch. Forget about her offense. She's a great hitter, but I, she's a fun player to watch defensively in the outfield, Alex. She's got a lot of personality no matter where she is. Offense, defense, she has a lot of fun on the field. And she's so good. Just tracking balls down her throws consistently are on the money. I, I got a knock on wood saying that. There's Chloe's dad. Got rid of the big hat. He's going with the uh, winter. There, he's got it always hiding it. I was going to say, I walked in with him into the game here this afternoon, and so, he, he had it on. <laughs> so he, okay, he picks his spots when to wear it. Okay. Maybe an offense, defense, yeah, a hat maybe. Deal. Who knows? Switching up the juju. I don't know. Maybe he said Coach Ball Malone's changing things up today. Everybody's I've changing change it up. up too. Yeah. I don't know. Got to get something different going. Katie Simmons at the plate. One and one count against Willis after Washington made it out prior to this. Oh, nasty pitch. Ooh. People wondering where Robert guessed, guessed that pitch was. He might have gotten fooled on this one. I think that was my question right back to the director there. I said, where was that? That was a good call down at the knees, below the knees. Change up, just dropping off the table at the end. It's a good pitcher's pitch for sure, but good take as well. 2-1. Hit to short, Williams. The first and a one, two, three inning for Willis and the Knights defense highlighted by that Chloe Evans catch. We head to the bottom. In 2005, played for the Texas Thunder from 04 to 06, played with Rockford 07 08. So, in fact, Kime got a chance to catch up with Zaleski last year in Tampa when uh, Texas played South Florida, and Allison was broadcasting the game. Full circle. What do you always say That's, about the softball? Yeah, it's for full circle. The Six degrees of separation, but in softball, it's like two, more like two or three. <laughs> everybody knows everybody. Gutier Not a bad thing. Gutierrez ahead 0-2 on Willis. Here in the bottom of the second. Willis, a good opportunity here to help her own cause. Swings and misses as Gutierrez gets the strikeout for the second out of the second inning. Gutierrez is going to do a great job painting this pitch off the plate. It's a beautiful location. Going to be the curve ball that's just going to continue to tail away from right-handed hitters. So important, especially when you're behind in the count, just trying to shorten up, get your barrel extended on that pitch. Don't try to do too much with it. Just think gap to gap. Now Jazz Williams takes ball one. A couple more things, by the way. Allison still has that outfit. She purchased that outfit. <laughs> Still wears it for Halloween as a costume. I love it. And she's, of course, she also said that Kat Osmer was one of the best teammates she ever had. That's Took care cool. of the team, would take him out to dinner, take care of it. Great combo there. There's a grounder to short, and the throw to first in time as Martinez makes the play to retire Williams. And That's saying a lot. It's saying that softball is growing on a national scale. Everywhere you look, it's saying that people love what Cindy Ball Malone is doing with this UCF program. The fans in Central Florida are definitely behind this team. A lot of good stuff. Incredible. Of course, uh, Oklahoma later this year will be mm -hmm. sold out. Oklahoma beating Baylor last night. Played in the OKC. They're at over 8,000 people. They had to turn people away here for this weekend. There's a swing and a miss by Martinez. How so much big demand there was. So here's the last pitch from Willis. And this pitch is what makes Sarah Willis so good. It's going to be painted on the upper. Upward part of the zone there. Going to still be a strike out of the hand, so it looks good as a hitter, but just going to continue to climb the ladder a little bit, staying in the zone. Just that upward trajectory making it tough. Martinez, the sophomore, takes ball one. All Big 12 freshman team a year ago. Remind, always reminds herself, she told me, when I talked to her before the season started, to be in the moment. Don't get caught looking ahead. Just focus on the moment in hand. Set the freshman school record with 52 RBIs last year. Takes there for a ball. Two and two, the count. That's 18 this year. Of course, her family all grew up playing baseball. She grew around then. Looked up to her dad. Who played baseball. It's the two pitch. 
She gets a grounder to Humphreys, who will go to first in time. Nice play by the freshman, Sierra Humphreys. Not an easy ball there, as that ball <clears throat> kind of died there, but Humphreys was right in front, of, was ready for it. Martinez is gonna get just the end of this ball. It's gonna be the change up out of the hand of Willis. But Humphreys does a great job just recognizing that, immediately knowing that it's gonna be nubbed towards her. And if she stays back on her heels, that ball could definitely take a funny hop. So good job crashing in from Sierra Humphreys. So one out. Reminder, you can send, by the way, all your pooch picks to UCF production. As Maloney takes ball, and I mean, I mean that, because I had people messaging me <laughs> personally their photos. I'm like, hey, I appreciate it, but send it to UCF production. So funny. Not me. So funny. I had Sammy Marshall's mom send their dog, Shelby Turner. <laughs> so, yeah, UCF production. Please, Alex, let everybody know. I get it. It's funny. People just want their dogs to become I famous. Get it, but I, I understand. I, I can't do anything about it if you're sending it to my personal uh, accounts. You can send it to Especially when account. I'm on the air. I don't check. <laughs> I'm not like Alex. I don't check social media when I'm on the mm. air. Alex is on top of those things. I'm able, yeah, I'm definitely corresponding back and forth. I lean on you when you give me updates. There's a Maloney here ahead 2-0. and oh. The redshirt sophomore. Trying to get something going for the Longhorns. Here at the top of the third, scoreless ball game. Two-zero pitch. It's a strike. Two-one. I'm just happy that Allison listened to my rec my orders on Friday night that I would allow cat photos. And we got a cat <laughs> Osterman photo. I'm happy now for the rest of the weekend. You guys can send all the dog photos you want. Perfect. I'm just happy. We got a with a cool Rockford photo. That's my highlight of the weekend. <laughs> Two and one. The count to Maloney. Foul tips that. And it's two and two. Great pitch there from Willis. Sarah Willis's ability to change planes. First she'll go up in the zone and then come back with that one down in the zone below the knees. I love the sequencing there that we're seeing from Willis and Coach Ball Malone, who's going to call the pitches. It's really good stuff and good execution. Two two. It's a high chopper foul. Slap there to third base. And coming from the side as an offensive player, I was obviously never the pitcher. Well, I was when I was very young, doesn't count. But I love the opportunities that I have to talk with these coaches and learn what their methods are calling pitches. And one of the people I talk to most, of course, is Lonnie Alameda for Florida State, was my head coach. And just all the thought process and strategy that goes into it, you know, where the game is now, these hitters are phenomenal. And we see so much offensive production across the country. That's hit to short. Williams is there. Throw to first in time. Nice play by Cody there at first base, making that play, keeping the foot on the bag as Maloney is retired for the second out of the inning. You are a two-time All-American first baseman, one of the best in the sports uh, history in college and pro. What do you think of Cody here so far at first? I think it's good athleticism from Jada Cody, but look right there. Jazz Williams going to get the Sunday hop. Jada Cody cutting across. I mean, that's pretty textbook overall. Just going to come, come across her body, make the grab. Nothing too crazy. It's timing, though, from first base more than anything. You don't want to stretch too early because then you get yourself in some sticky situations. But ta talking about, too, real quick, uh, Sarah Willis and just the pitch calling that goes into this from Cindy Ball Malone, as you see her there looking on in the dugout, that's what sets those kind of at-bats up. So you have a fielder like Jazz Williams easily getting a Sunday hop because of Sarah Willis in the circle, able to go up in the zone, down, down in the zone, keep the hitters guessing with ground ball production. 0-1 the count to Bella Dayton. Dayton takes a strike, and Willis ahead quick going two. You know, you and I have been friends, I think, seven, eight years now. I just learned that you were a pitcher when you were young. Uh, I mean, does it count? I was, I, you know, I, I didn't know. 10, 11 years old. It's like everybody's a pitcher at that at that age. Just like uh, growing up, everybody's a shortstop. You come to college, what position did you play? Oh, well, I mean, shortstop. Yeah, you and everybody else, right? <laughs> just oh, saying. 0-2 oh, the count. Strike three looking, frozen. Willis with the strikeout, a one, two, three, third. Getting the Longhorns down in order. We head to the bottom of the third, still no score. Is, First ever cancellation in the Big 12 softball. Is no thank you an appropriate response to snow being snowed out? No thank you. Apparently they had about 20 to 30 <laughs> inches of snow. Oh my goodness. Tough to play softball in the snow, Alex. Uh, yeah, I'd say so. 
Aubrey Evans swings at the first pitch. It's a fly ball to right. And the catch is made for the first out of the inning as Gutierrez off to a good start. Texas pitching, by the way, currently now has thrown 23 in a third inning of shutout softball going back to the BYU series. They're number five in the country in ERA. And that's the thing, they got five quality arms as Samantha Ray getting the start here at center field. She has started at second base. She could play, she played some left field last night. Versatile athlete, part of this freshman class that's ranked 16th in the country, according to X Rating Softball. And part of the future of this program, when you look into next year, her, Sierra Humphreys, and this freshman class. Facing this tough Texas pitching staff with Gutierrez. We saw Kavan last night. Mac Morgan, who started in Tallahassee, won 18 games last year. Estelle Check, the veteran lefty. A lot of depth on this Longhorn pitching staff. The 1-1 one, one is right. Right now, both Gutierrez and Willis in a great rhythm from a pitching standpoint. They're moving and grooving, and both sides of the circle looking really good. Lights out right now. Little offensive production, but if your coaches, what they want to say is, hey, make an adjustment. Commit to a pitch. you got to make adjustments pitch to pitch. Watch other people's at bat, right? Game's telling you everything you need to know. Ray ahead, three and one. We're still looking for the first hit of this ball game. We only have a walk to Jada Cody. He's the only runner getting on so far. The three one pitch, swing and a miss. And this is a very old school softball game. It's almost like Cat Osterman and Allison Keimer going against each other. UCF Texas alums. I like it, just a flat out pitcher's duel. Three balls, two strikes to count. The pitch, Ray taps it to short. Tough play for Martinez, throws to first in time. What a play by Vivi Martinez, who makes the play. We'll see to get Samantha Ray out for the second out here in the third. What a bang bang play. Great job by Martinez coming and crashing, throwing the run across the diamond. Bang bang play. It's so hard to get in live time. You got to question whether or not it was the right call, of course, with the speed of Ray down the line. Oof, gave me goosebumps. Kotzelnik takes a straight. It's got to be conclusive, too, to overturn a Absolutely. Call. And I think that's why you see Coach Bomolo not challenging yeah. that call because it's got to be believable enough, right? Right now, still some time left. It's not going to be a make or break play. Of course, every play is important. I'm not saying that. It's just a matter of timing, knowing that your challenges are limited. Well, it just wasn't conclusive enough mm -hmm. there to, to tell one way or the other. So Kotzelnik with a 1-1 count. Two outs here in the bottom of the third in a scoreless ball game. Well, I think you saw Coach Baumalone also talking to Coach Mueller, saying, hey, what do you think yeah. here? She walked over to the dugout. Stormy hits one to right. That's going to drop in for the hit. A first base hit of the ball game by either side belongs to the Knights and Stormy Kotzelnik. Stormy Kotzelnik was seeing the ball so well, it was only a matter of time before she found her way on base. Takes that pitch low in the zone, still drops barrel. That's a great piece of hitting. I love her getting her hands down there and bat extended on that pitch. Because that's not a bad pitcher's pitch. If you're Gutierrez, you're still pleased with that location. And you know, it was just a good piece of hitting. Sophia Simpson were in the bullpen. Jada Cody at the plate. Walked in their first at bat against Gutierrez. It takes ball one. You got Stormy, who's three for three in stolen bases this year. Stole 35 bases in her previous two years at Louisiana. So she has good wheels. Two outs here in the bottom of the third. Gutierrez delivers a strike. It's one and one to Cody. And typically I would say let Jada Cody go to work here, but if she finds herself in a two-strike count, we might see some movement on the base path. Cody lines it to second, but Washington is there. We'll throw to first to retire the side. A nice play. A 
Coach, uh, thanks for taking a moment with us. Sure. Just your, your thoughts on Gutierrez. She's looked good here through the first three innings. Yeah, she's doing what we need to do. Obviously, we're in a tight pitches matchup, so, uh, you know, runs are at a premium right now. So she's doing a good job playing to our field. Awesome, Coach. You talk runs being at a premium. What do you want to see from your hitters in the box? Well, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're trying to do it right now. Obviously, we had one loud hit ball, and that's about it. So, uh, Cody's, uh, you know, the pitchers doing, Willis is doing a great job against us so far. We need to make some adjustments and get on time. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate you. You're welcome. Welcome. Mike White joining us here in the top of the fourth. Top of the order for the Longhorns, Henry, Scott, and Mitchell against Sarah Willis. And we'll see him now the second time in the order as you look at Sarah Willis' box score. What do you see? What do you, you heard what Mike White just talked about, what they got to do offensively. What do you think? Oh, there's so much I could say right now, but just Sarah Willis looking so good. She's being effective in attacking hitters early in the count, too. I love that because then she has a lot of room to work and work off the plate, which is where she's finding a lot of success. But also, you look at strategy and heading into the game. You know that Willis is going to be a pitcher that has upward velo, and then she's got the changeup to match. So as a coach on the other side of the field, if you're Mike White, you're seeing how good are my hitters at sticking to the plan because are we getting on top of the rise ball knowing that she's up in the zone? Are we sitting change up? What are we doing right now? These Texas hitters just getting beat and jammed on pitches. And so when you talk about out efficiency and out production, you're really just assessing how hard are we hitting the ball? Where are we hitting the ball? And that's how you start making your decisions. Henry's ahead 2-0 and on Sarah Willis. Near the top of the fourth inning. 2-0 pitch. Henry shows butt, takes a strike, 2-1. Two, so two balls and a strike to count to the freshman out of Dickinson, Texas. Was the number three rated high school softball player, according to Perfect Games, number five, according to Extra Innings. And certainly in the mix for National Freshman of the Year. Hits one to second. Aubrey Evans is there. Throw to first in time to retire Henry, who's 0 for 2 so far in this game. What out. And this is where you talk having a plan in game strategy. You had that 2-1 pitch. So pretty even count if you're Henry, but just getting fooled on that changeup, that tells me that my hitters aren't seeing it out of the hand enough from Sarah Willis. And if I'm coach, I'm wanting them to make that adjustment sooner. Let those pitches go. Now Scott, who walked in the first inning, takes a ball, 1-0 oh the count. Of course, easier said than done. I mean, the Absolutely. thing that makes Willis so difficult is she can throw that change up on any count and can throw it for strikes consistently. And I'm sure from a hitter's perspective, when it leaves her hand, it looks differently than by the time, it, you know, you commit to the swing. Or don't commit. Sometimes you just get frozen. That's a comebacker to Willis, who fields her own position, throws the first in time to retire. Scott, two gone. Great job by Sarah Willis fielding her position so well. Look at that little PFP pitcher fielding practice. Going to fire it over to first. That one was hit hard back up the middle. Good, firm piece of hitting right off the bat, but Sarah Willis makes it look so simple. Cat-like reflexes, pun intended. Now Mitchell. Reached on a fielder's choice back in the first. And then was thrown out, tried to steal second. Carson Fryer threw her out. Big play in the game. As Mitchell takes a strike, 0-1 the count. You talk about just easier said than done, right? Of course, that's the standard. But when you have teams like Texas, number two in the country right now, you're, you're talking advanced players versus elite players. Some of these players are phenomenal. They are elite level athletes. So asking them to make those changes becomes part of the expectation. Woo, that pitch, pull the <laughs> strings there. Oh, and two, and that's an example right there. What are you supposed to do here if you're Mitchell? And that's an elite location, elite pitch from Willis. Look at it, just down in the zone. At the knee, he's gonna buckle you. But hey, that's a good take. If I'm Mitchell, I don't want to hit that pitch. She gets a piece of that to stay alive. And it's hard to, being a hitter against a pitcher that's throwing a great game, it's hard to adapt and kind of change that mentality, swallow the ego as you learn how to become a strategic hitter, an intentional hitter. It's hard to take strikes, typically throughout your young careers, you're taught, hey, if you see it in the zone, take a hack. But when you start getting velo changes and variations here, like we see from Willis, you've got to sit pitches. That one she takes for a ball, one and two. You can't effectively hit 70 up and in on your hands and then 
45 down and away, you just can't do it. I don't care how good you are. There you see head coach Sidney Bo Malone. We'll hope to be joy talk to her in the bottom half of the fourth before that st inning starts. One, two from Willis. Got her. Strikeout for Willis. She gets through the fourth. And she retires as high powered long. Yeah. Welcome back. Bottom of the fourth. We're down joined by UCF head coach Cindy Ball Malone. And coach uh, Sarah Willis has been magnificent through the first four innings. What are you seeing from her? Uh, she's just hitting her spots and mixing pitches, doing a really good job with it and using her defense. Coach, you, you see your hitters trying to find some success here, putting some better balls in play. But what do you want to see them do adjustment wise throughout the next couple innings? Uh, I think just be themselves more. You know, I, I, it, just free up, be themselves, and um, pass the bat. Awesome. All yeah. right, Coach, thanks right. a lot for joining us. Thank you. With Coach Cindy Ball Malone joining us here at the bottom of the fourth. Pass the bat, talk momentum. It's part of it. Hitting becomes contagious, and when you get one hitter on a roll, having a good quality plate appearance, it just kind of trickles down. Hard in the order, Humphreys, Chloe Evans, and Savannah Adams to hit. Three, four, five, and this sold out crowd here at the Plex. How do the Knights sign Goodyear? Because Goodyear is there, but right now both pitchers are on a hot play and pitching at a high level. Absolutely. I think you pick a side of the plate and see the ball over the middle as much as you can, especially when you're ahead in the count. And when you're ahead in the count, get your swing off, right? Get your timing down, be on time, and don't miss. She swings at the first pitch, grounds to short. Martinez is there, throw to first in time to get the first down. And right now, both pitchers in a zone. And then Gutierrez gets getting quick outs here. So now Chloe Evans, who struck out back in the first. This is a very old school softball game. One hit combined in the ball game. No runs, no hits, no errors for Texas. No runs, one hit, no errors for UCF. A ball and no strikes the count. Chloe takes the strike, gets one and one the count. I think the hard thing too from Gutierrez is she's working both sides of the plate against UCF. And so if you're a hitter having to pick a side, not only a side, but also a pitch velo for the most part, right? We talk zones, we talk approach and things like that. And trying to have that discipline is really hard. Especially when you've got a pitcher painting both corners. Chloe ahead of the count, two and one. You see the Knights dug out, trying to get some of that momentum. Who's going to get momentum? Who's going to blink first? A two one from Gutierrez. It's a strike, two and two. You see this pitch from Gutierrez going to be right off the plate there. It's going to just break the corner on the outside. It's a tough pitch when it's just continuing to move away. 2-2 pitch, Evans hits a fly ball, but playable to center, left center. Henry comes all the way to left to make the catch. <laughs> and Chloe Evans is retired for the second out of the inning. So two up, two down here in the fourth. See some good communication too in center field between Henry and Dayton. Just having the conversation that one, the wind sort of letting it tail a little bit more. They had a good little smile after Henry made the catch. Now Savannah Adams, it's 0 for 1 today. And the first pitch, it's a strike. Adams played in the UCF Texas meeting in 2022 in Clearwater. Drove in three runs in that game. Off the bench, helped spark a Knights comeback as UCF would win 15 to 10. That was in Clearwater. Adams grounds one to short here, Martinez. First, in a one, two, three inning by Gutierrez. A pitcher's duel. Gutierrez be an analyst for a dog show. This is, how have you not done this? This I is mean, a natural for I you. could talk coloring, I could talk their smiles, right? All, all kinds of things. We'll have to talk to Major off there, get you like a dog <laughs> whip missing or, you know, one of those dog shows there, so be an analyst so funny. on a broadcast. Reese Atwood at the plate, flew out in her first at bat on right field when Chloe Evans made that incredible catch against the wall. She gets jammed, pops it up, foul territory. Humphrey sliding, couldn't come up with it. 
She called off Fryer, but just couldn't get there. And Atwood lives to play uh, for another at bat. And this one's tough because you have Humphreys over at third, respecting the power of Atwood. So she's playing behind the bag, going to be crashing in on this. But that's a catch I just feel like you can't miss because it's a missed opportunity potentially for a really good hitter in Atwood. When you can have a hitter beat like her, you want to try to take advantage as much as you can, not giving up any freebies. Tough. Would have been a great play, though, to be fair. The 0-2. Yeah, you don't want to give a player is Atwood's abilities, the nation's leader in RBIs, top 10 in slugging, home runs. You don't want to give her too many at-bats. When we talk missed opportunities, that's how we had the open for today's show. It's just you can't give up outs to really great teams because it comes back to haunt you. One, two. Foul tipped. Atwood stays alive. Eric Lopez here alongside two-time All-American, Alex Powers. Pooch expert, <laughs> analyst. Dog connoisseur, yeah. There, oh, wow. <laughs> wow, we're going to the big I'm time to the thesaurus th here. <laughs> just a dog lover, so. One and two, the count to Atwood. The sophomore. Calls for time with a count of one and two. Of course, Reese Atwood last year had three consecutive walk-off hits in three consecutive games. A walk-off hit against Kansas at home, followed by a walk-off hit against Oklahoma State, and then a walk-off home run against Oklahoma State last year. That pitch is called a ball, and it's two and two, and the Knight faithful here to sold out Plex not happy. That's a big pitch for Sarah Willis. Beautiful location down in the zone. Below the knees, change up so much discipline for Atwood to be able to lay off that pitch. I think it was the right call. She grounds to short. Williams is there. Throw to first. And Atwood is retired. So no harm, no foul, as they say. One gone here in the fifth. Alyssa Washington now will step in. I mentioned that Atwood streak last year. That walk-off was a three-run homer against Kelly Maxwell in Oklahoma State. Of course, next weekend, Texas will be in Stillwater against Oklahoma State in a big three-game series. As Washington takes for a ball. And then, of course, in a couple of weekends, one that I think the entire nation is going to be looking at, all eyes in Austin, Texas, when Oklahoma and Texas renew their Red River rivalry in one of the most anticipated regular season, maybe the most anticipated regular season matchup in that history of the rivalry. There you see UCF baseball will be back home against Texas Tech next weekend. As Willis gets a strike to make it one and one, UCF softball will be in Lubbock next weekend against Texas Tech. Sarah Willis flipping this change up again. I love how much she's going to this pitch. Frequency wise, it's good stuff from Coach Bob Malone, responsible for calling the pitches and the sequencing here. One one pitch. The strike, it's one and two. And, and Willis goes to this in any count, and that's another thing that I'm a big fan of because there's a lot of confidence in this pitch. Doesn't matter if she's behind in the count. I've seen her throw it 3-0 and come back 3-1 and then get people out. And so just the confidence in that off-speed pitch mixed with the velo could make for a long day. One, two from Willis. It's high, two and two. To Washington, who was an all Big 12 second teamer in 2022. The senior from Abilene, Texas. He's playing at second base this year, played at short and third last year. Two, two. Inside corner, frozen. Strike three. Willis gets the strikeout for the second out here in the fifth. And it's the setup right here. You got Willis. It's going to go down and away. Off speed change up. Then going to come firm and inside corner. A little off the plate there. It's a tough pitch. Eye to eye to adjust to. Great execution from Willis. Third strikeout of the ball game for Willis. Now Katie Seamuts. The junior from Humboldt, Texas. 
was a unanimous All Big 12 freshman performer in 2022, takes ball one. She can play first, as she is today. She can also catch. She hit a home run against UCF in that 2022 game in Clearwater. It was a two-run homer. She hit it off Gianna Mancha, the former Knight ace. Who helped the, was the ace for the Knights alongside Kamal Woodall. So that ball is going to drop for a hit to center. First hit of the ball game for the Longhorns comes via Katie Simuk single here in the top of the fifth. Simmons going to do a great job driving that pitch off the plate, gets enough recognition on it out of the hand. Look at how that barrel extends through the zone. Quality piece of hitting from Simmons. Finally breaking it open. First hit allowed by Willis in four and two thirds innings against the number one offense in, in hitting in Texas. Pretty impressive, but now Martinez at the plate. Takes a ball, 1-0, the count. Texas is number one coming into this game, hitting 403 this weekend in batting average. Ninth in the country in home runs per game. Third in on-base percentage at 479. Fourth in runs scored per game at 889. Fourth in slugging percentage at 673. Pretty impressive offensive numbers. It's Adaya Wallace. Wallace here, the pitch runner. But says that Coach White and Coach Singleton are doing a lot of things right in the box. You see them take pregame VP too. I mean, I think it speaks for itself when you see the balls flying all across the field like we, we get to. All those numbers I mentioned, they're on pace to break every school record. There's Singleton. But right now, Texas trying to scratch out a run against Willis. Runner at first, two outs with a 1-0 count to Martinez, who drills one into right field. That is a fair ball, fair ball down the line. They're going to send Wallace. The throw from Aubrey Evans is cut off. It's an RBI double by Martinez, and the Texas Longhorns take a one to nothing lead here in the fifth. Vivi Martinez going to tomahawk that ball, elevated in the zone across the numbers of her jersey, just going to get her hands around that pitch. Beautiful job down the right field line. That is a quality at bat there. Just seeing it out of the hand. That's called having a plan. That's called executing the plan. Match and plane with a pitch up in the zone. Somebody's going to get one. And when the opportunity comes, I don't want to be the one responsible for not putting my team in a good position. Coach Ball Malone will come out as the call is safe. Uh, play stands. But, but, but Martinez delivering. So with, all with two outs, a single and then the double, all with two outs. That's how quick Texas could strike. Two out, situational hitting. And it's a one nothing lead for the Longhorns. I think if you're UCF right now too, you just have the mindset of, hey, somebody had to score, right? You got to score to win. So we can score one too, but trying to limit any further damage. Now Maloney at the plate. Chops one high to third. Humphreys will have no play. That's a vintage Maloney hit, slap hitter. And now Texas with runners at the corners with two outs. This is what's gonna make Texas so good. This is why they're number two in the country, their ability to apply the pressure. Maloney gonna take advantage of the hard ground there, getting some good firm bounce right off the bat. Well, that's what Mike White told us this week. What he likes about this offense is the variety it has. They're not one-dimensional. They could do a lot of different things. They, if they have to play small ball to beat you, they will. They'll slap the ball. They they can. They can hit for the long ball. It was interesting listening to Mike White recently. The thing that disappointed him about the Houston series is they left a lot of runners on base. He thought they went away from small ball. He thought they could have used more, maybe challenged the Houston defense in that series. Well, they're dynamic, and I think your best teams have a multitude of ways that they can score, whether it's going to be short game, long ball, balls in the gap. They're going to run the base as well. They take care of the ball defensively. Leanne Good is the pinch hitter, the sophomore from San Antonio, Texas. Was second team all Big 12 last year. Was a D1 softball, all freshman, all American. And with those credentials, she's a weapon off the bench. That tells you about the depth of this Longhorns team. 
As Good takes a strike. She has played first base, second base, shortstop, left field, center field, right field. She's like a utility weapon for them. Part of this depth that Texas has. Big, big moment here. First and third, two outs, a run in. Willis on the 0-1. That's low one and one to count to good. I mean, how many teams could say they have an all-conference performer could come off the bench? Does it start? But that's part of the, the accepting your team role. Not many, and I, I think that the best coaches, especially those building great culture, get that kind of buy-in, whether you're a starter or somebody that's going to be a role player. That is hit, base hit to right field, an RBI single for good. Chloe throwing there is cut off by Willis. It's an RBI single by Leanne Good, and it's 2-0 Texas. Good does a great job just taking her hands right to that pitch. Again, something more up in the zone, but going to match play. And this is telling me that Texas is really thinking about those plans in the box, what pitches they're hunting. We are finally seeing some good bats on balls, a couple of good quality play appearances back-to-back. -back. Hitting is contagious. Well, this is an example of what Mike White told you. You asked him in our conference call about what has really made him the most proud and impressed about his team so far. Of course, but still going to dominate the power game. She delivers a strike to Kate and Henry. Katie Birch is in the game in left field. Sarah Willis is at right field. Take it over for Chloe Evans for now. I think this also allows Coach Ball Malone, in case she decides she wants to re-enter Willis in the game, she didn't burn a move. That's one of the unique moves here. Willis could still come back and re-enter the game because she didn't leave the game. She just went from pitcher to right field. So I think that's part of the strategy here by Coach Ball Malone. But right now she's hoping that Jewel can get him out of this inning against Kate and Henry. It's a comebacker off Jules' glove to Williams, who touched the bag at second for the force out to end the inning. But Texas gets play here. Obviously, Plitt pitched here from 17 to 21, the all-time winningest pitcher in UCF softball history. Now an assistant at North Georgia for Mike Davenport. Helped them win the national title last year. They're in the mix again this year to try to go a repeat. But when she would play, her parents, Terry and Mike, would that, usually that dog would be around. I'll tell you that. Certainly send him a shout out over there. I'm sure watching in Georgia, they might be playing a game right now. Willis swigs and misses. So now the Knights are down 2 0 here. We, we wondered who would blink first. How do the Knights respond here, Alex, against Gutierrez? Well, I think right now just trying to stick to their plan, not swinging at pitches out of the zone right there. We saw Sarah Willis offering something well off the plate from Gutierrez and just bringing it back over the white is going to be the plan for UCF. Yeah, that's a comebacker to Gutierrez. He throws the first to get the out. Willis retired. One gone here in the fifth. Now the Leah White won 99 games. Was an assistant, uh, grad assistant coach in 2022, that year when the Knights won the regional, won the American Conference title. She, that's helped her get that job at North Georgia. Part of this Coach Ball Malone coaching tree that has been building is Jazz Williams. Takes a ball. Of course, Whitney Jones was an assistant here. Is now the assistant at Ohio State. Her former assistant at Boise State doing a great job as the head coach at Gardner-Webb. As Williams hits one to right. That's going to drop for a hit. Williams riding, uh, going to first, going to second. Will stand there with a one-out double for Jazz Williams. See if that gets the Knights offense going. The right side of the field is getting a lot of action here this afternoon, but Jazz Williams is going to take that pitch. Look at the extension she's going to get there, just offering, doesn't even have to finish the swing. Right down the line, beautiful placement, good execution from Jazz Williams, trying to pass the bat here, just like Coach Ball Malone said. So Jazz Williams, who Andrea Adelson of ESPN was, is, was here this weekend, was working on a feature story on Jazz, got to hang out in the outfield. As Aubrey Evans takes a strike, there's Jazz's husband. Andrea Adelson literally watched the game with him to see kind of the day in the life there. It was pretty cool. And the kids. 
Chris Jazz, great story. MLB.com did a feature on her last year, being a mom and a softball player. As Aubrey takes the ball. 2-0 the count. And you're starting to see now the healthy Jazz Williams. Remember, she got hurt opening day, missed a ton of time, came back for the South Carolina game, was kind of working the rust off. But now you're starting to see her bat come into life. As Evans comes to life with a base hit to right. They will hold Williams at third. Aubrey Evans will take second on the throw home. And the Knights have got something cooking here in the bottom of the fifth, second and third with one out. Good job by Aubrey Evans here. And that right there is making Gutierrez throw over the wide of the plate. UCF back to back, taking advantage of pitches in the zone that they know they can hit. And that's what Coach Ball Malone wanted to see, the good pass and the bat momentum go in the way of the Knights. But also, good heads up base running by Aubrey Evans. I love that now getting herself in scoring position because where we sit right now, a base hit could bring in two. Patty Ruth Tate will come out here to talk to Gutierrez. Estelle Check is warming up now as well as Sophia Simpson in the bullpen. By the way, Leanne Good, who pinch hit in the top half of the inning, is in left field defensively for the Longhorns. There you see Check. On the right, lefty warming up with Simpson on the left. Knights are going to go to their bench. They're going to go Samantha Del Hoyo, the freshman, will pinch run for Aubrey Evans. Del Hoyo is one of their go-tos when it comes to pinch running. It's been a kind of a weapon in her role there as the pinch runner. And now Coach Malone talking to Sammy Ray here. What do you think she's telling her right here in this big spot for the freshman? Probably trying to just settle her down, say, hey, this is not all on you. The pressure is on them, right? You just go up there, have a good competitive at bat, make something happen. Putting the ball in play is going to be a job here. Situational opportunity, because right now with a hitter like Ray up, you can run what's called a down angle, meaning the ball on the ground immediately. You have runners trying to score because you have back-to-back -back people. They can replace one another. So if Jazz Williams gets blown up, Trying to score. Now you have Del Hoyo behind her. Ray takes a ball, infield in for the Longhorns. You saw Steve Singleton coming out. He runs the defense in the infield. Absolutely. Zaleski runs the outfield. And that's what we talk about with that down angle. They're selling out for this play here at the plate, knowing that as soon as that ball is hit on the ground, the runners are gone. Pitch is outside, 2-0 to Ray. For the young freshman, Ray. Second and third, one out for the Knights here at the bottom of the fifth. And there you see the defense alignment. You got your outfield also playing in, definitely playing for a play at the plate. Anything in the green, they know they're firing four. Ray takes a strike, it's two and one. It's a big moment here. You got the top of the order coming up for the Knights. And this is where Coach Ball Malone's tired of seeing her teams be in the position to win, right? They're within one swing of a threat. Little tapper to first, and they're going to go foul. Smart play by Katie Seamlitz. She decided, I'm going to let this go foul because I'm not going to have a chance to get the runner out at home. And he goes foul. And Simmons being that junior upperclassman experience, that's all that is right there because that ball was beautiful placement from Samantha Ray. It could be tough if you have somebody young Lacking that experience, you see the ball just going to follow Ray down the line, but Simmons just letting it roll. Yeah, Simmons make a nice play there. So 2-2 two -two count. Ray hits it to the right side. Washington will underhand to first to get the out, but Jazz Williams comes in to score, and it's a 2-1 to -one ball game, and that's a quality out for Ray. Hit the ball to the right side and drive in the run. And that ends the Texas pitching staff scoreless inning streak at 25 innings. They hadn't given up a run since BYU a week ago, early in that series. Mike White's coming out. I think if you're Coach Bob Malone, you're kind of like, dang, I don't know if I love this right now, but obviously strategy game. Stormy's been seeing the ball so well, so I also think that it could work in her favor. She's got a hit in this ball game. One for two today. The lefty-lefty matchup is hard, though, because the ball's just tailing away from you. Linder knocked down by Check. Who will throw to first, throws it away! Throw it away! De Hoya will score, and we're tied at 2-2 as the Longhorns make a mistake defensively.
tie game. Stormy Godswin has had a really good at bats. The last seven at bats and plate appearances that we've seen from her fires this one right back at check. First pitch that she's going to see in the zone. Taking advantage, line drive right back at the circle. Going to rattle check just a little bit. Does enough of a job causing the errant throw, but that's so tough as a pitcher. Like, man, you've got the adrenaline flowing, a ball coming right back at you. It's going to just give you that slight hesitation. 2-0 the count to Jada Cody. As Kotzelnik gets on on the throwing air by check. Tough a tricky play for a lefty there. It, it is. And I think just the ball right back at her, I think is kind of what shook her up, even just the slightest bit. And, you know, if that's a ground ball, maybe it's a different result. Kind of a flukish play, but nonetheless, the Knights will take it. It's a 2-2 game. 2-1 to Cody. Ball three, three and one. What a turn of events. Cody here ahead of the count. His check delivers. Cody pops it up. Washington here in the grass area makes the catch. To end the inning. We go to the six. Knights get two runs. High stakes. It's Grace Jewell facing Scott to start the six. It'll be Scott Mitchell Atwood, 2-3-4 against Grace Jewell. Well, in every game matters whether you're playing conference play or not. It's crucial to try to secure every victory that you can, but also that strength of schedule that we hear so much about is going to play a big factor into where these teams end up for postseason. The ball is missed 2-0. and oh. Coming into this weekend, UCF had the 11th strongest schedule in the country, mm -hmm. or excuse me, 14th. Texas mm -hmm. had the 11th. I have a feeling both are going to, those numbers are going to move up after these three games. Absolutely. I feel like they have to. The 2 0. 3 0 to Scott. And now I think we start asking ourselves here pretty soon the question of might we see Sarah Willis come back in the circle? Remember, she's in right UCF. field, Correct. never left the game. Correct. So that is an option if they choose to go that route. There is also a couple other night hit, uh, pitchers warming up. As Joe gives a four pitch walk to Scott to start the six. There's Willis at right field, and there's DeVoe at right on the right side, and Sona Hollis, or no, excuse me, that's Ava Justman on the left side, a lefty. So two lefties warming up in the bullpen, and you have Willis. So you technically, if you're Coach Bumble, you technically have three options right now you could go to if you decide to make a pitching change. Meanwhile, now you got Mitchell at the plate with the runner first. Now, if you're Mike White, you've got a hot hitter in Jolie Mitchell. You've got a great base runner in Scott. Do you sacrifice here, or do you let try to have Scott try to steal a base, or do you let Mitchell hit away? She takes there, ball one. I mean, there's a lot you can do, right? The first thing is, I think she's gonna. <laughs> I think she's gonna make Grace throw a strike. It seems like. exactly. I think right. You just kind of let the game dictate those decisions as you go. Right now, Grace Jewell struggling to find the strike zone. I also think if you're Coach Ball Malone, you have a short leash on Jewell. Mitchell swings away and drops a base hit in front of Ray. Mike White's going to send the throw by Willis to home plate. She's out. Scott's thrown out on a throw by Sarah Willis. Fryer on the tag. What a throw and play by the Knights. What can't she do, Sarah Willis? Sarah Willis just comes up with an absolute cannon. Going to get the out call at home. You've got Grace Jewell fired up. I think Mike White's going to question whether or not the tag was actually made from Fryer right there. But it does look like yeah, the she made contact he, to Scott. Well, and I think he might ask for, hey, get some help and go for replay. And of course, gonna go. my thing is, by the way, when the umpires talk about this, you might as well just go to replay and not waste a couple minutes. But there's the tag by Fryer. I don't, we haven't seen anything that would suggest that would be overturned. I agree. But I'm going to defend Mike White. I would challenge that. That was an insane play by Sarah Willis. Insane play. Just came up an absolute cannon and just fired a missile. And Fryer on the tag. Bang, bang, play. That's what you live for. Here it is again. <laughs> Got her on the tag by that backside. Look at the execution. Crowd's reaction. And they've overturned the call. They said... Scott, 
the tag was not made, and Scott is safe. And look at this right here, though. This is where Samantha Ray and, and Sarah Willis is going to have her back, going to come up with the throw. Beautiful throw. Carson Fryer just up the line a smidge too much. But it was also the great angles, I think, from the camera crew. They were able to get that call overturned. Oof, that's a big one. Was that conclusive enough? Boy, I don't know about that. Nonetheless, here's a pitch. Gets past Fryer. And so a huge swing there. And it's 3-2 Texas. And now you got a runner at third. And now if you're the Knights, you got to regroup. You just made an incredible play that was taken away from you. With Atwood at the plate, the most dangerous hitter in the, in the field in this stadium right now. This is where you want to try to... Yeah, you got to regather your thoughts further, here, right? Yeah, limit any further damage. Contain the crazy and chaos that is the fans. I and that pitch is a ball, 2-0. and oh. So if now the question, Alex, if you're a player, I mean, this is going to be challenging for the Knights. You had this huge play overturn. You go know, from the highs to the lows. How, you've got to regroup here. You've got to kind of put it behind you. You can't ride the wave of the highs and lows. I think that's the hardest part. Atwood grounds to short. That's going to get the run in as Williams will throw to first. And Mitchell scores, and the pass ball hurts the Knights there. It's 4-2 Texas here in the six, two outs. I think that's the right play as well from the UCF defense. You're just working for outs right now. You know you can come back and try to make the adjustments in the box, but you've got to get outs going. Clean slate here for Justman in the circle. That's RBI number 51 for Atwood. Puts her 15 behind Lindsey Stevens and Taylor Tom for the school record as Washington gets hit by a pitch from Justman. This is the free passes, the freebies that we talk about. They just can't have. It was the four-pitch walk to start the inning to Mia Scott from Grace Jewell, and now the hit by pitch. There's some ridiculous stat out there, and it's not even the freebies, but it is the leadoff runners on base comes back to haunt you time and time again. Proven to be the case right now for UCF. Seamuts now uh, at the plate. Seamuts there with a runner at first, one out. There's a strike. Oh, and one the count. So again, Atwood with 51 RBIs. Lindsey Stevens with 66. Taylor Tom at 66. Stevens did it in 2014. Taylor Tom in 2013. That's the school record for a single season in RBIs. The 0 1. The strike, it's 0 2. <laughs> 0 2 the count. A 4 2 lead for Texas. The 0 2 up high for a ball. I like Justin getting the ball right now, too, just trying to switch things up. Again, it's all about the juju in the circle, juju on the field. We talk momentum so often. Yeah, this place was rocking after that play. It was. Play, and now it it's was. silent. It was fired I think, up. I think some are still shocked. <laughs> One, two. It's been a back and forth game. I know the, the fans in the stands don't have the luxury of the replay like we get here on screen. Oh, trust me. No, I saw some. They were watching on the <laughs> they phone. They were watching. Yeah, hey, they were I'm that fan as well when I'm at games, so I get I it. I guarantee you they're watching the outfit. <laughs> what is Alex saying? One and two, the count. Too funny. Hit the right foul. It's so true, though. I am totally that fan. You know, if I'm in a game, maybe I don't have it on the whole time, but absolutely, if something controversial comes up, I'm whipping that phone out. I'm going to the app, and I want to see for myself. I can assure you that is a point of conversation in the left field lounge this week. Uh, not right now and probably the post game, and maybe the rest of the weekend. One and two the count. Up high, two and two. Right now, if you're the Knights, you got it doesn't matter. You just got to get out here. If you're out, adjustment and try to keep it here to a two-run game. Because you've broken through against Texas pitching in that last half inning. Two, two. Jam popped up to second. Aubrey Evans is there, makes the catch for the second out. It's Justman, the third night pitcher here tonight. 
or today. You know what they say, Eric, we create our own destiny. We're in control of our fate. And so some things didn't go the way for UCF, but they're responsible for the momentum that they bring back into the bottom half of the inning, trying to respond. Yeah, they're chasing too, but what is that right now in a game like this? It could be everything. So hit up the middle. Williams dives, flip to second, not in time. And it's first and second, but a heck of a play by Williams just to get there. Jazz Williams has so much athleticism back there. Look at how easily she's going to just get that ball over to second base. It is late, but just even the body awareness, in my opinion, to do something like that. Taking some of the conversation like we had earlier about advanced defensive players, elite defense. It's a good job by Williams keeping that ball in the infield because otherwise you never know with Washington's speed. Could have gotten a third if that ball gets all the way to center. You're right. And, you know, it's a, it looks like a pitch hitter for the Longhorns. Victoria Hunter, the freshman out of Houston, Texas. They're really excited about her, and they've kind of had her in this role as a big pinch hitter with runners in scoring position, try to drive in some runs. And she's bought into that role. You have so much depth. Can't play everybody all the time. So you got to accept your role, and Hunter has done that. She's been a weapon off the bench for this young freshman. And he's coming for this spot. Two on, two out, trying to break it open for Texas. And one of the things that Coach White said about Victoria Hunter is that she just comes in here and has no fear. She gets up there, she takes her hack, she doesn't get cheated. And knowing that that's what you have off the bench, you get excited to give her opportunities. There's a swing and a miss. There's no question. I think we leave. Texas is a national title contender this year, but they're going to be a national title contender for the coming years. Couldn't agree more. Jasmine doing a good job climbing the ladder. Working pitches up in the zone. Trying to challenge these Texas hitters to get on top. 1-1 one, one is missed. 2-1. and one. We talk so much about the importance of velocity changes and having a variation in your speed, but I also think with where the game is now, it's crucial for these pitchers to have different locations up and down in the zone that are effective. Got to be able to throw everything for a strike at all planes. There's a grounder to third. Humphreys will tag the runner. Throw to first. Out. Inning ends. Apparently she didn't tag a runner at third. She threw it out at first. Doesn't matter. They get out of the inning. But Texas gets two runs back. And takes a Sierra Humphreys. Steps in against Check. Maloney back in at right field. Bringing her in there. Four runs, six hits, one air for Texas. Two runs, three hits, no airs for UCF. It's a slow grounder. Bobbled a little bit, but a nice play there. Nonetheless, made by Scott. 5-3 ground out as Humphreys is retired. One gone. Here's Estelle check pitching, and here's Estelle checks dog, Dakota. <laughs> I think her mom tweeted this one through, so I wonder what these girls are going to think coming off the field after the game and saying, hey, that's my dog. Why is it on Twitter? Why is it on air? I would have had, like, so many smiles coming off the field if that were me. There's a bun attempt by Chloe Evans, and it'll go foul. Yeah, Tegan Cavando and didn't mind talking about her dog when you asked her about it in the post game yesterday. And you saw she was just all Smile. smiles. Oh, she was, exactly, all smiles. She was more excited about <laughs> talking about her dog than the actual game. Of course. She was telling me, like, yeah, it was a good game. We did our defense was great. <laughs> then when you asked about the dog, she light up. Here's a bunt as Check throws. Why? Oh, they're gonna say Washington did hold her foot on the bag. And Ball Malone comes out of the box. I have a feeling this will be reviewed. Get two challenges, but we're getting to the point where the umpire's discretion. Let's look here. Did Washington keep her foot on the bag? I don't think so. Well, I'm 0 for 1 today, though, so. What a good job. Amazing to even come Washington. up with it. Yeah, Absolutely. just amazing. I, Eric, I don't know. I might have to disagree with you. I'm questioning that left foot. Watch how much in contact that left foot is going to stay with the bag. Well, what's important here is the call on the field is an out. 
So they're going to have to find something that's over, that is you can overturn. To, otherwise, it'll stay. Here's a great, great, great angle. Here. Look at that left left foot right there. It's still in contact with the bag. I think that's going to yeah. be the one in question. But also, let's talk real quick the effectiveness of Coach Ball Malone not challenging that play early in the ball game with their offense. Do you right. remember? She yeah. didn't yeah. want to ch challenge it. She was yeah, talking to Coach to. Mueller and then. That's amazing. That's clutch. The captain Washington making that play. I mean, that, what would you give the odds on a play like that being made? I mean, that is amazing. The captain Washington. Now Griffin with two outs here in the six. All I'm saying is thank goodness for replay because in real time, I don't know if I, we might be 0 for 2 on those. Some people in the outfield might disagree right now. <laughs> <on that one. laughs> Although that last one, they, they stayed with the call. So, and of course, Washington make great plays defensively. And that's going to be the key for Texas. If they want to get to OKC and compete for that national title, of course, Oklahoma. If they make defensive plays like that, they will be right there. And I think everybody as a softball fan looks forward to that series in a couple of weeks in Austin, where they're expecting a sellout all weekend. As Griffin gets jammed, it's a grounder. Washington, so nonchalant, so easy, making the play. She just makes it look easy there. A little split and force a winner take all game three series. Ava Justman back to work here at the top of the seventh. First pitch fouled off. Leanne Good. Pinch hit, stayed in the game. Leading it off here. Shannon Doherty comes into the game to play first base. Cody goes from first to third. We're in the top of the seventh. Good hitting in that nine spot will be followed by Henry and Scott. 9-1-2 against Ava Justman. Justman is the sixth UCF pitcher already used in this series. There's a butt attempt by Good. Justman Fields throws to first in time. Nice job by Justman to get Good for the first out here in the seventh. And Good going to try to lay the sneaky bun down here, but Justman just going to come over the lefty with the moves out there in the circle. Look at the athleticism there. We talk about athleticism so much. Good just motoring down the line, but Justman going to cut that ball off too. A lot of comfortability. Mike White's going to make a move here, top of the seventh. But I mentioned last night, UCF started Kaylin Felton, brought in Angelina DeVoe, and then Kaylin Cochran, who was fantastic, the young sophomore. And then today here, Sarah Willis started the game. Grace Jewell came in, and now Justman. And Coach Paul Malone said it, even in our post game, you're probably going to see everybody in the staff with a lineup like this. You've got to use every arm in your disposal to contain this dynamic Texas offense. That's just the way the game is now. Try to give them different looks, keep them off balance as much as you can. And actually, she came back in, and I'm wondering. What that was he about? Let's see what the umpire's not going to talk about it. Were they going to say this was a foul ball or maybe a an or something in the lineup or a legal pitch could have been called or something? Might have been the only thing I could think of. Of course, the umpires made no sign. I'm not exactly sure what they're going to call. I was thinking she was in the box. Did the ball hit the bat? Did was the bat tossed somewhere? Maybe the illegal pitch is the only thing that would make sense. Yeah, but I, the umpire's got to make a signal out of that. You can't just make make it up, you know, guess. The hat, I mean, but I don't know. We'll, we'll get a clarification there. Oh, to the count. Good hits a fly ball to right. Evans makes the catch. So, it's an out at the end of the day. However you want to score it, one out. 
But it's tough because when you are facing a team like Texas, we talk about the freebies and not having to give up outs and with questionable calls like that, especially discretionary calls, you wonder, could this come back to haunt me? And it wasn't even in my control, technically. Here's a butt attempt by Henry. Doherty Fields throws to first in time. Aubrey Evans covering the bag at first. And two up, two down here in the seventh. Good job by Shannon Doherty fielding her position. Jessman going to make a good pitch there. Trying to get the sneaky bun again. Back-to-back -back hitters. Texas still trying to apply the pressure to the UCF defense, but Doherty, a lot of experience and confidence on the corner. So they're saying that UCF didn't re-enter a player correctly, and so as a result, Mike White caught that, so Good got an extra at-bat out of it. Could have been the Doherty didn't, they didn't check in? Could have been? I don't That's interesting. Meanwhile, it's 2-0 oh, the count while Alex tries to figure out. <laughs> I mean, we got the box score here. If you say so, Mia Scott at the plate. But that's what the that's the official what we've been told. It's a re-entry thing with UCF didn't re-enter a player properly. Willis is at left field, by the way. Chloe back in. So it had to be either Chloe coming in back at right. Had to be that because she was pulled earlier. Or Doherty at first, yeah. Nonetheless, I mean, it didn't matter. Good flow. No. Seen a lot of unique plays today, Alex. A lot of unique plays. It's a chopper to third. A uh, pop to third. Cody makes the catch. So all of that, all that matters was a one, two, three. Entry. It's been a back and forth game, a wild game, a little bit of everything. As Rowe pinch hitting here to start the seventh against Check. She's hitting in the sixth spot, followed by Jazz Williams and Aubrey Evans. Six, seven, eight. Bunt by Rowe, check fields, throws to first. Perfect play by check that time. As Rowe tried to challenge her, checks had a couple of moments there. Look at that, she's smiling. Yes, I made that one perfectly. <laughs> Third time's a charm for check. Yeah. Good job too, fielding her position again. Coming from the left side, this is not gonna be an easy play, especially with a player like Janisha Rowe with that speed down the line. But check's gonna field it, make the turn, fires over to first, good throw. So now Jazz Williams takes a ball, 1-0 and the count. Of course, Jazz has a connection with the Texas program. Her niece is former Longhorn second baseman, Chez Seavers. There's a grounder to third. Scott throws to first as Williams is retired. And the Longhorns now are out away from clinching the series. Good play by Scott. Scott's been really solid over there at the hot corner. Somebody that fields her position well. I love how she's cutting across the field too, making the plays. So Aubrey Evans at the plate. I think you may have had it backwards. Chez, yeah, you said Chez is the aunt of Jazz. Is yeah. That, yeah, that's what we're saying. Okay, okay, cool. I was like, yeah, it's somebody else that's been around the game too and impacted it in a lot of ways. Chez has been I may have said it. it's been a long awesome game. This, been a long game. I'm still know. trying to she figure has... out some of the roll calls <laughs> here. <laughs> the <laughs> replays still have you. Two couple up a replays, re-entry rules. Like we, we got a little bit of everything. It's here. been crazy. So I may have may not have said. Yeah. I don't know. But They're related. Sharing the story. Seaver's a great player. Correct. Yes, has been awesome for the storytelling of softball. Meanwhile, the Longhorns a strike away here. That's a ball one and two. The count. We've seen some things we haven't seen in a while. <laughs> it's been it's been a fascinating game. It's been a good game. Yeah, a lot of back game. and forth action. Much more action than yesterday. The one two. It's high. Two and two now. The count to Aubrey. He's trying to extend the game. They're trying to bring the tying run to the plate. Evans pops it up. This could do it. Left field. Martinez coming over from short. Makes the catch. And the Texas Longhorns clinch the series. They win it 4-2 the final.